in front of us. Here is the athletic.com. They put out a straw poll to those who have a Heisman vote. And, you know, Max Olson was on with us last week. And this is, they, they put together after this past weekend's games. And, of course, nobody had a bigger game than perhaps Caleb Williams. This is the straw poll. The numbers to the right of the name, like, for example, Caleb Williams, 33 first-place votes, four second-place votes, one third-place vote. He has overwhelming 108 points or votes based on three for first place, two for second, one for third. C.J. Stroud has always been near the very top, is second. How about Max Duggan? I like that, although that's a long way to make up. But, again, this is just over – handful of people who they've uh, been able to uh, get a straw poll for, and a bunch of them might be working for the Athletic. Blake Corum, questionable right now whether he plays against Ohio State, the Michigan running back. Hendon Hooker at one point might have been the favorite. Now out for the year. And then Drake May, who had a loss this past weekend to Georgia Tech. Is that right, Paul? Mm -hmm. And uh, he's at the bottom of that list. And so that's just a straw poll. There are other names involved. Uh, but none of them registered ahead of these. This is, again, a small portion, but kind of like one of those trending polls. Caleb Williams has jumped to the top at 108 double and more than the, at least from this straw poll than even Ohio State's C.J. Stroud. I'm glad that this one is uh, different enough than the top five I sent out today to, to Emory. So oh, good. It doesn't look like I copied it. There are some things that are – Two things I'll tell you that are exactly the same, uh, but I'll, I'll let, leave that for 555. Yeah, this is interesting how things go into rivalry week. And, you know, I, I think there's, you know, we, we, we asked Dan Hope yesterday from 11 Warriors, has C.J. Stroud really had his Heisman moment? And, and he hasn't. So that kind of can explain why people aren't feeling that. And it is kind of strange that you have to have the, the Heisman moment now or – you know, one of those those games, but Caleb Williams has certainly had it. I I think you could say that Max Duggan has had four of them uh, already this year, which is you know maybe where he he closes the gap on some of the stats that guys like Caleb Williams and C.J. Stroud, Hendon Hooker, and Drake May would have over them because of their their various offenses and how they run it. But you know, I I do think that Max Duggan needs a little more uh, hype than he's been getting. Yeah, well, he's not going to get it at this point. I mean, I mean, it's you know. Yeah, been, what else does he have to do? Right? <laughs> not lose any games. Hadn't done that. Uh, not turn the ball over. Hadn't done that. Beat all your rivals. He's done that. Beat everybody in front of you. He's done that. I mean, he's done everything that's been asked of him. Uh, I guess he's just not uh, flashy enough, or he doesn't play in Los Angeles or in the Big Ten, or I don't know. I don't know what the deal is. Why people are, are slow to 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 embrace Max Duggan, and you know, it's weird because if he you know, played in other places, I feel like he'd be the exact type of guy that sort of gets embraced. Yeah. You know, like the Tebow, right? Like that type of a dude. But he plays in Fort Worth for a team that, you know, is is not that popular, I suppose. I mean, I'm, and by that, I'm not saying that insulting, just is not, you know, as big of a, of a you know, program as, as some of the other season contention with. I, I don't get why people are so slow to give Max Duggan his credit. Um, not to say that there's not an argument for others to win the Heisman, but, you know, seeing Kayla Williams as a favorite, um, not surprising. I think it's just, I think it's easy. You look at his numbers, it's like, wow, a bunch of touchdowns, you know, what, three interceptions on the year. USC, that markets itself. Um, and the fact that, you know, yeah, they're very much in the mix for the Pac-12 and potentially the college football playoff still if a few things go differently. Um, I, I can see the case. It's, it's an easy case to make, but uh, I don't know if it's necessarily the case, uh, in, in my opinion. I, I, uh, I do know this, is that he's had Heisman moments. You hear about those. You know, that you look back at some guys that ran back punts in big games, like, for example, a Desmond Howard or Tim Brown or whoever, or uh, the quarterbacks that have brought a team from behind. He's done all of that. But uh, I'm, it's good to see him uh, with TCU unbeaten, and at least he's three. And who knows what that means. He's probably not one that's going to get a lot of national voting because of, well, just because of the way we've seen this before. But you know what we have seen a lot? Heisman Trophy winners in the end that were not even really much on the radar before the season began. Back-to-back -back years with Robert Griffin III and a guy named Johnny Football Manziel. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, I don't know. I don't know how to follow that up. Well, I mean, it's just it, it, Duggan would be a part of that list, right? There's no way he was on any kind well, of early watch list. I could see William Stroud, 
Uh, like Jay Jame- came out of nowhere. Jame- basically. Jameis wasn't either. So no, that was, there you go. That, was yeah. that was a few years in a row. So yeah, they, um, yeah, that I did. I do agree that that's kind of part of the problem is that you know you have these people in your head from the beginning, so you start. You know, it's a self fulfilling prophecy. Not almost, all these, almost like a top twenty five yeah, exactly. preseason yeah. poll. Yeah, preseason, yeah, like, it's kind of BS. You yeah. got to climb up the. Yeah, you're right. So no, I college football is really bad about living in the now. Like, you know, and that's what it needs to be. That's why that's why a 12-team playoff helps you live in the now because you have to go, all right, well, right now, you know, instead of the four teams that are, you know, the best record and, you know, have TV ratings and all these other silly things that they throw into it and game control, it's just it's going to force them into right now. Uh, maybe at least a little bit more. I might be naive in thinking it's going to really change it. But, but, yeah, there's all this, well, this team has always been there. Okay, but – if they're not as good this year, then they don't have to be there. You don't have to, you know, the team in a year ago is not the team now. Joe Burrow. Yeah, Joe Burrow. There's another there. one that jumped yeah. off the page after probably was just kind of, you know, everyone kind of maybe knew a little bit about him when he was at LSU, but not what the, like that. But you said, like, again, you're three years in a row, Griffin, Manziel, Jameis Winston, uh, and, and then among others, there have been some that from start to finish. It's still amazing to me back in 2009 that ever – that Alabama had never had a Heisman Trophy winner until 2009, and of course they've had a chunk now. Uh, they had a guy named Johnny Musso back, I believe, in 1972 when Johnny Rogers may have won it. There was at least somebody in the conversation, and they've had a couple of other players that were good, but nobody has really threatened to win that award, and Ingram finally did in 2009. So that's a list of the, the Heisman Trophy straw poll. From TheAthletic.com. I just need to see K- – I mean, I'm fine with Caleb Williams. I, I like his numbers and all of that. I do think that if he played elsewhere, you know, it wasn't as big of a brand, he would get knocked for the system that he plays in. Uh, I think that if he played elsewhere, he'd get knocked for the schedule that he's played. Um, they have played nobody. I mean, other than last week against UCLA and then Utah. And, yes, they lost that game by one point, and that was a, a good Utah team, those top 25. But that's their two top 25 teams, and we are in week 12, and they played two – and now, it's been a good year for the Pac-12, too. That's what's kind of frustrating, I would think, for yeah, them. Yeah, but they've avoided most of that. They've played, like I said, well, two of those. Well, they didn't avoid it. The schedule put it out that way, right? Well, no, they've avo- I mean, they've avoided it, but they haven't had to play it. No, that's what I'm saying. It, the schedule was made by the conference, not by USC. As far as non-conference, well, we, yes, it was. Well, right. I'm uh, just saying they've avoided playing. Or, I guess if we're getting to the definition of avoided, yes, they've they haven't had to play those teams there. Is that that's yeah. I guess what I'm trying yeah, to yeah. say? I was going to clarify that so the Mister Internet uh, Warrior would want to get up there well, and go. What do you mean by that? They but look, the the best the best team they just, played other than Utah and UCLA was Oregon State, and they only won by three. Yeah, yeah. So. And, and they have of course Notre Dame coming up this week after the win against UCLA. Go ahead. Anything else? No, no. That's. I mean, I was just getting to the point of like they haven't really played anybody. I was just gonna say like, but if he goes through this stretch run in these next couple of weeks, then then yeah, he'll improve something. But um, I wouldn't, you know, put him as the favorite right this second because of those reasons that I just mentioned. But I I understand why why the build is there. Well, one of the things about it as well is that Hooker has dropped, right? A couple of others have dropped. And when you have a freshman quarterback like Drake May putting up huge numbers and then that went out the window with the loss to Georgia Tech, you really, you know, at the start of the year, Bryce Young's the repeat champ, or he's the one who's the defending Heisman Trophy winner. And there was a point where I didn't think he would be in New York, and that still might not happen. But a lot of people have just kind of fallen by the wayside. That might have been Heisman Trophy-type candidates. All right, the Butkus Award.